Hello and welcome to The Gaggle, where we challenge and, if necessary, destroy media narratives. I'm George Samueli, and with me today is uh, co-founder of The Gaggle, Peter Lavelle, who's also host of Artie's talk show, uh, Crosstalk. Well, one of the um, less than attractive uh, features of this post-election season is the reappearance of Barack Hussein Obama. Um, he's laid relatively low for the past four years, but now he's back having just published his third memoir. Um, and his third autobiography. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of third one, third one. Um, and it's called A Promised Land. Uh, nothing is too grandiose for, uh, uh, for the 44th president of the United States. And he's, of course, promoting this book. The book, apparently, and I haven't read it, um, it comes in with, at a, with a dull thud of 780 pages, which does seem a little on the excessive side. Um, this person is not Charles de Gaulle. Uh, he's not Joseph Vissarionovich Stalin. I mean, he hasn't led such a huge, long, full life that you need a couple of thousand pages to describe it all. Uh, nonetheless, he's promoting it. And yesterday, uh, he appeared on the CBS's flagship show, 60 Minutes. And uh, it's not just a question of that the treatment he received was extremely different from the one that uh, Donald Trump received at the hands of um, Leslie Stahl. Um, he, the, the level of the questions were very much as Hillary Clinton described it in 2008. Can I get a, a comfier pillow for you? Um, are you sure that, you're, <laughs> that you, you don't need something softer to sit on? Um, and I, I give you some measure of the, uh, the questions that were asked. Um, Scott Pelley, what is your advice at this moment for President Trump? In your view, is it time for him to concede? Um, what is your estimation uh, of what our adversaries are thinking right now, Russia, China, about the fact that this transition is not moving forward? Um, I'm curious about the title. I think a lot of people feel that we are further uh, from the promised land than ever. Um, you know, and then something like, um, um, in your book, you ask um, whether I was too tempered in speaking the truth, too cautious in word or deed. Many Americans, Mr. President, believe you were too cautious, too tempered. Um, now, of course, uh, this is... Um, were they, were they licking his boots in between these yes, questions? They were. Yes, they oh, okay. were. They were. They were cut out from the the final uh, <laughs> transmission. Um, but what is interesting and very amusing about this is that again, the the media are propagating the myth that Obama has said nothing over the past four years. Of course, he has said many times, as he expressed his uh, contempt for uh, his successor, uh, and needless to say, you know. There were no questions about the transition that took place in 2016, 2017. A unique one, a unique <laughs> one. <laughs> what, 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 what's your feeling, Peter? You know, wanting to, uh, um, uh, to return to 2016, 2012, 2008, um, you know, that may, that's an exercise maybe of the heart, um, of a weak heart, <laughs> um, someone that is complacent um, um, uh, safe and secure uh, in their belief in themselves and their ideology and the belief that the professional managerial class will never fail. Um, you know, I can see that. But anyone that wants to go back um, doesn't understand the present. Um, and, and wanting to go back tells me uh, that they're, they actually have no idea what, what has happened in the last four years, why the, there was the outcome of 2016 and the outcome of 2020. Now, the, we haven't seen any certification of votes yet. That's, that's in route. That's part of the, the uh, transition. Uh, and you and I are patiently waiting for it. But what they want to do is they, they're so desperate to get rid of Donald Trump that they, they've forgotten what politics is all about. I mean, the left was clobbered on election day, clobbered. And, and this is something they can't, they can't um, uh, absorb. They refuse to absorb because it, 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 it's an 
um, it, it contravenes their, their view of uh, um, um, demographics as destiny. Okay, it's only a matter of time before the um, these um, uh, deplorables will will fade away. Okay, there's a total misreading of it, and they and what they do is they go back and they cling on to Obama and lick his boots, hoping it will go back to normalcy. Well, nothing's going to go back to normal, nor should it, because that is just denying history. Okay, I mean history is to be made, not to be returned to. Yes, I and, think, uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, no, absolutely right. Uh, and one of the reasons why uh, we're not going back to um, uh, Obama is the general universal disappointment um, with the Obama years, with the little that he achieved, uh, given the enormous amount of goodwill that um, existed in 2008. Uh, Americans, you know, whatever their politics, we're excited about the idea of uh, this final breakthrough, an African-American man will be president. There was a lot of goodwill for him. And the George W. Bush years were so terrible, you know, people long for a fresh start. Obama never provided that fresh start. Uh, he, he, was, he was an empty suit. He never undertook any of the, the drastic uh, changes that needed to be made um, that favored Main Street as opposed to Wall Street. He never did that. Um, the foreign interventions that he campaigned uh, against uh, in 2008, he uh, revitalized, relaunched, and, uh, and re-energized um, during his uh, term in office. And the, the racial divisions that he was supposed to heal, he didn't heal. There was, it, was the, the, it was the worst ever uh, racial divisions when he left. And what's happened now, and I think you, you allude to it, is for the first time in a, in a long time, in 50 years, there's uh, cracks in that wall, in that democratic wall, that 90, that, that 95% of the black vote that the Democrats always count on has suddenly cracked. Maybe well, it's short term, sure. maybe it won't happen, but it, it, it's cracked. It, so it, maybe we're moving towards a genuinely post-racial future. But it, you know, if, we, if we take from 2008 all the way up to 2020, look at how the, the Democrats have lost state houses and other offices across the land. It was over a thousand during the time that Obama was president. And now look at the election results uh, of this uh, cycle. And it's startling what's going on out there. And, 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 and what was tragic, but probably perfectly um, uh, uh, predicted, there was no program. Neither party ran on a program it, it, because Trump is saying, it's me, take it or leave it type thing. And then you know we have to get rid of Trump. There was what wasn't much policy there. But if you just go down one level, one one level down ticket here, uh, there's a lot of things going on here. And 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 the polls got it wrong. Um, um, the Democratic Party. I mean, they are so red faced right now. I mean, Nancy Pelosi says she's going to run again as Speaker of the House. I mean, any you know, talk about norms and guardrails. She really should check out now and have as much ice cream as she wants. Okay, um, and the, the the one of the reasons why there wasn't a campaign on the Democratic side. I mean, Trump could run run, run on his record. He has a mixed record. Okay, but good enough for um, uh, minorities across the board. We had more minorities minorities voting for Donald Trump, the racist, yeah. then, then since 1960. In 1960, everyone was before the civil rights movement. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, this is remarkable. And th that's why they pushed Joe. Um, because Joe was Obama's vice president, as if that should mean anything, okay? I mean, from what we know about the kiss and tell books, they all uh, looked, at, looked down their noses at Joe and laughed at him. What was it? Robert Gates, the former Secretary of Defense, said that Joe Biden was on the wrong side of every single foreign policy issue in his lifetime, or it's, I'm paraphrasing, of course, okay? But see, they're, they're clinging to a scarecrow, a shadow, if you want, given that's Obama's shadow here. But, you know, it, it, Biden couldn't run on a campaign because of Obama, because of how he, he actually, uh, he didn't settle anything in the Democratic Party. 
because if you look at the growth of the progressive side of the party, the Bernie bros and people like that, even people that liked Elizabeth Warren, all right? Uh, and then you have like the AOCs that are coming up through the ranks here. Joe Biden is terrified of them. He doesn't know what, the, I mean, they finally quote unquote got rid of Trump. Now what do we do? That was that, that film, The Candidate in the 1970s, remember? That you was know, a was great like, movie. That, that's, that, that was a great classic. movie. I, yeah. In fact, I've always thought that the candidate was uh, the, the very essence of Barack Obama. You know, you've got these you go. uh, political pros who kind of look at this guy, very handsome, uh, charming, educated, and say, you're the man, you know, you, you're, you're going to win this office. But of course, they never actually told him what policies he was going to run on. They just said, hey, you're the man, you're the great guy, you know, you know, the camera loves you. And I was it. So once Barack Obama was elected, he was, you know, that famous last, uh, words in that movie. What do we do now? What do we do now? Exactly. Um, so, you know, looking back, I mean, what, what do people long for? A, a, a botched recovery from the greatest financial crisis since the Great Depression, where no one was held accountable? You, you missed those days, okay? Uh, you missed the racial strife. You missed that, too. Uh, do you miss destroying countries like Libya and backing um, extremist groups in Syria? And, and, and um, surging all over the place, Afghanistan and Iraq, okay? You missed that, too? Right. Really? So that's, yeah, that's exactly right. And of course, you have to remember that those were the years, the Obama years, in which um, manufacturing industry uh, was shipped uh, overseas. He told people, don't worry any at all about China. Uh, you know, China is just a great uh, trading partner. You know, we don't have to worry about losing all of those jobs. Now, of course, the Democrats have sort of basically <laughs> plagiarized the Trump plan and said, yeah, yeah, we got to do something about China and, and double quick. Um, and when, you know, and when Obama, these questions were raised, Obama, you know, he arrogantly said, hey, those jobs are gone. They, you know, they're not coming back, you know, learn to code. Um, so yeah, those things. And again, of course, you know, people down at the bottom of the uh, ladder, their income kept uh, going down because, you know, essentially Obama did nothing to control uh, the immigration flow. And so for the first time under uh, Trump, uh, the incomes of people down at the bottom has actually gone up because under Trump has been a, a type of the labor market. So there is nothing at all uh, that is desirable except by the media. And the media class, they identify with uh, Obama. Obama is what they like. I mean, you know, Harvard, uh, you know, smooth talking. He looks good whether he's wearing jeans or whether he's wearing a suit because he's tall and thin. <laughs> And they feel good that he's black. See, th this is this exactly this is what it's all about, okay? Because it somehow they 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 went through this metamorphosis of oh, phew, I'm not racist, okay? You can't accuse me of that, okay? This genuflecting, okay? I mean, they it's that's their president, okay? Because it's all about how they feel about themselves and how the status quo is good for us because we have a black president, okay? Okay. I mean, fine. Nominally speaking, it does show a, 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 a shift through history, you know, where uh, the, the original sin of the American Republic was slavery. I perfectly agree with that here. But, you know, how much, uh, you know, how much political cachet do you get out of that? Because what about policy? Like you just said here, right. I mean, Obama said, you know, that, you know, that um, NAFTA wasn't great, but he didn't do anything about it. No. Okay? okay. He didn't do anything no. about it. No. And, and also, there was an acute awareness of what was going on in the economy. And, but they're, you know, they're, they're perfectly willing. And, and this is where it came from, the Obama years. I think Schumer said it. He said, you know, for, for every, you'll correct me in the numbers, of course, but for, for, for every worker that we, we lose in the, in, in, in the heartland, we get three people in suburbia. That's, the, that, that's an Obama mindset, okay? That, that's what it's all about here. Right, right. And, and, and because... Because people, you know, uh, CBS, <laughs> as they lick his, his, boot, his boots there, as they cling to him, um, it, it, this gives you a perfect indication, George, that they're not going to do an autopsy because they didn't do an autopsy in 2016. That's why we, we got Trump, okay? Right. So if you want to go back to Obama, you're going to get Trump 2.0 or someone like him, okay? Right, right. no, that's exactly right. Because um, uh, what we've seen in this election, uh, is that, uh, yes, Trump did lose um, votes uh, in the suburbs, 
And there is a, now a drift of voters, uh, white voters, uh, toward the Democratic Party. You know, these are white voters, these are suburban voters, college-educated white voters. But the more they drift over to the, Demo to the Democratic Party, it's, it's leading to a drift in the other direction. And it's not just the, uh, you know, uh, the non-college educated whites um, that have already, but they've already drifted before. But now you're getting non-college educated blacks and Hispanics who don't like all this, you know, with the, essentially the people who support AOC, Green New Deal, uh, let's get rid of fossil fuels, uh, defund the police and so on. They don't like that agenda and hence they're drifting away um, to the uh, GOP. And Obama has no understanding of all of this. And instead he starts again, talks with these windy generalities, uh, a promised land. I am not yet ready to give up on the idea of America. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank God you're not ready to give up on us. George, you can sleep well tonight, okay? <laughs> no, I mean, if, if you look at look at the, the inroads um, that the GOP made um, with, uh, with minorities, is that the, the, for these minorities, they look at the Democratic Party. What is the Democratic Party? It's woke corporatism, woke cor cor corporatism, it's the super rich, and it's the professional managerial class. They're, they're, there's no place for them. They're not being talked to, okay? And, and that is very alienating. Now you get, the, you get Donald Trump, the you know, rough and tumble guy, you know, he's like at a rodeo with Twitter, okay? But he did speak to them. And if you look at some of these really interesting counties in, in, in Texas, like on the border, I mean, his, Trump's message on Im immigration rang true for them. OK, I mean, the, the, the thing is, is that the, the Democratic Party, they have their plantation and everyone has their place there. And if you want to get off the plantation, they think you're you're nuts. OK, well, being on the plantation isn't the best place to spend time. OK, and they're beginning to realize that. And if the Republican Party can finally, and this is my hope is that they can unshackle themselves from this libertarian ideology and small um, uh, government, uh, they have a real fighting chance because this mantra of small government and libertarianism, come that's the donor class for the GOP, okay? That's where they, they, they're maintained. Now, if they can unshackle themselves, unmoor themselves to that, they have a fighting chance because it's about values that people care about, okay? Not well, how that's, that's they the thing. should, I mean, because, not how they should be. You right. should be this way. Right, but that's the, that's the thing about um, Obama. And then what you get, as soon as <clears throat> he opens his mouth, and you saw that in that CBS uh, interview, as soon as he opens his mouth, he begins to express his moral arrogance. He presents himself as superior to everybody else. He, you know, America um, might just just be good enough when it voted for him. Might just be, maybe, maybe, you know, he'll give it one more chance. But he absolutely failed when, um, uh, when it failed to uh, vote for his anointed successor. So can you imagine the, the absolute arrogance that it takes for somebody to say, yeah, America's just simply isn't good enough. It's just not on my moral plane. I mean, I, you know, maybe one day America will be on my moral plane. At the moment, I just can't, don't, can't do it. I mean, sorry. Uh, and and this, this was exhibited through his wife, okay, after the election, essentially um, berating anyone that voted for Donald Trump as being a sexist, being a xenophobe, um, uh, racist, uh, you, you name it, okay? There's no learning curve here. There's just no learning curve. I mean, you know, I don't, did you see in this election cycle, the Republicans berating the electorate? I didn't see any of it. I saw only that coming from the left. If you vote for Donald Trump, you're a certain kind of person. They, they, they have no idea. They're, they're, they're talking platitudes here. And again, you know, the, the, the defining probably uh, phrase of uh, 20th century American politics, 21st century American politics is Hillary Clinton's deplorable statement because it continues. It can, continues to have an impact here. I mean, and look at Donald Trump. I mean, here's a guy with a silver spoon in his mouth, very, very arrogant, thinks very highly of himself, but he never talked down to the voters. And I think right, that's I one think of his- that's, I think that's a crucial thing. That's exactly right, that he never did that because for all that they keep to people talk about him as being narcissistic, he really isn't narcissistic in the way that Obama was narcissistic, in the way that Hillary Clinton is narcissistic. Well, I mean, the, it, it takes a narcissism to believe 
that tens of millions of people are deplorable. They're just simply not on your elevated, you know, moral level. Trump has never thought that. I mean, Trump, Trump says he's very competitive, obviously, but he's never elevated himself onto a high moral level. He's never said he's a particularly moral person. I mean, you know, he is what he is. Like, you know, take he is what he is. Yeah. Well, see, but that's it. I think we've commented on it before. But you know, when you, when you have these politicians and they're in uh, when they're they're canvassing in in Iowa, they they put on a cowboy hat, you know, and eat hot dogs. Or when they go down to South Carolina, and they like, oh, all of a sudden look Southern drawl. Yeah. You know, Donald Trump, he goes in a suit and a red tie everywhere and talks the same. You know, yeah. uh, you know, I want to make make it very very clear because we're talking about a style of politics and a perception of politics here, and we're putting Donald Trump in. A, a particular category of uh, how a politician is effective or ineffective here. Now, I want to make it very clear, George and I have, on Crosstalk and now at great length here on the gaggle, been very critical of Donald Trump's policies, okay? But we're talking about a style of politics and a perception of the electorate. So let's make sure we're not cheerleading here. We're trying to dig down deeper into the minutia about how this election cycle has turned out. So I think that's right. But I think that Again, when, when we look at um, Trump and uh, Obama, you know, we can see Trump uh, got it. He understood America. I mean, he's, you know, he may not, you know, may not be that educated. You know, he's fairly educated, but, you know, he's not somebody who reads books very much. Um, nonetheless, he understood America. He's always understood America throughout his life, um, which is why he was be, always been very successful. And, <clears throat> It's not that easy to succeed in the real estate world of uh, New York. It's not that easy to have the number one TV show uh, in America for year year after year. I mean, he pulled all that off because he's always understood, you know, what what goes on in America. Obama never did that, or, you know, and and you can see now that he really never understood the sort of the goodwill that was extended to him and That's his true. contempt that he ex repeatedly expresses towards America. The America that's showered him with money, with favors, uh, you, know, you know, bestowed the presidency on him. And all he, all he does is just express his contempt for this uh, country. Uh, yeah, that's, that's the difference between uh, Trump and uh, Obama. Well, and, and also Obama uh, um, uh, typifies the, the professional managerial class approach to politics, okay, which is, is um, uh, left wanting because it doesn't work, okay. Um, and what it does is, is that it's, on the one hand, it, it seemingly promotes merit, but what it actually does is it promotes mediocrity because it, if you, heard, you hold or, and, or in vocally uh, express a certain set of values, that is what gives you merit for some reason, which I, I don't understand that. I mean, it had nothing to do with ability. It's, it has a lot to do with how to mimic. Okay, and that and that's exactly what people do. They just mimic these slogans here. But if, if you're working an eight to five job or two jobs, and you got you got kids, you got to make sure to get home from school, or you have to do homeschooling. I, I mean, when you have the the the, uh, the 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 hardships of everyday life, you know, this virtue signaling, you're just saying it's just not for me. I just don't get it. Okay, no, I mean, no, no, I, I got yeah. other things to really worry. Real life things. Right. Uh, that's exactly right. And that's why. Basis. And that's why uh, during the Obama years. Uh, the Democrats kept getting clobbered. I mean, he, you know, they got they got clobbered in the midterms in 2010. Uh, they got clobbered in the midterms in 2014. He did win re-election um, fairly comfortably against a very weak opponent. And I think people kind of, you know, they 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 liked him. They they found him a kind of a, a quite a likable person. They liked his family. He, you know, he seemed like a good family man. There was no real reason to vote against him. But it was clear that his policies were rejected and that people did not want a, re a return to Obamaism, hence their, their rejection of Hillary Clinton in 2016, well, despite his campaigning so vigorously for her. You know, it's really interesting. I, I think you remember it was the, um, the, the, the annual press, um, um, press party that they have in Washington, a press association. And remember when um, 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 Barack Obama denigrated uh, Donald Trump, okay? But, you know, and then 
but see, what, what, uh, Obama is is actually doing the same thing because he, um, his anointed one in 2016. I mean, um, you're voting on my legacy. You're voting. It, voting for her is like voting for me. Remember all that nonsense yeah. on the stump. And 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 Obama never got over it. Okay, and he came up with all of his reasons why Hillary didn't win. Okay, because it was policy. Okay. And, and and also he took it as a personal insult. His ego was, could just couldn't handle it. Okay, and then he saw how Trump was um, dismantling his legacy. Okay, and he's going to have Joe Biden do exactly the same thing. I mean, latest news reports in George. You know, I don't want to wreck your day, but it looks like Susan Rice is high on the list for Secretary of State. Okay. Well, I and, read that, but I, I I still wonder whether. Um, she has the votes. Remember, he wanted uh, Obama wanted her as Secretary of State um, in his second term in 2013. The Republicans told him, "No, we're never going to vote for her because of uh, Benghazi." Um, now, all right, that was already some time ago. Maybe they they've forgotten about Benghazi, but I still wonder whether. The, the votes are there to, to, for Susan Rice. My prediction is this, there, there aren't votes there for Susan Rice, but there'll be votes for Hillary Clinton because they would love to have a Hillary to kick around again, okay? And, and because the Republican base despises her, okay? So <laughs> we'll see what Joe's up to and his handlers, okay? Right. But it, it's, it's not gonna be pretty. It's not gonna be no, pretty. No, I think, that, I, think, I think that's right. And I think that people are completely underestimating um, the uh, antagonism that already exists in the country uh, toward a Biden administration. And given also that it's likely that the Senate will be uh, in Republican hands. Republicans only need to win one of the two in Georgia. And I think and, they're gonna win, and they're gonna win both. Okay? Yeah, and the, the, the terrible defeat that was inflicted on, um, uh, on Nancy Pelosi, which means that there must be about 30 or 40 Democrats in the House right now worrying about 2022. They think they're going to be out. In 20, they're already worrying about their jobs. The, the Republican minority leader in the House of Representatives is going to be a very powerful person because right. Nancy has, has taken a beating, a beating in this right. election right. cycle here. Right. And there are plenty of uh, Democrats that see people like AOC and the squad is a plague on their party. Right. And so her ability to whip her caucus is going to be so, it's been so weakened right now. It's been very weakened because, you know, we, for, for, for people that don't uh, uh, have an expertise in American politics, these people have to go face the electorate in two years. Know, it's brutal. Exactly. Okay. And, and, and given what happens invariably, after two years of a uh, new party in power in the White House, always massive congressional losses. I mean, it happened with Ronald Reagan in 1982, uh, happened with Trump, but always, you know, and then of course, famously Bill Clinton in, in 94. It, it is kind of amazing that uh, Pelosi doesn't see the writing on the wall. I mean, I remember Newt Gingrich in 98, after the, the debacle of the 98 uh, midterm, saw the writing on the wall and he, he stepped down as speaker. But apparently, you know, she tends to uh, stay on and I, it doesn't seem like anyone- I thought they were a party of norms, okay? Right. Nancy be breaking those norms all the yeah. time. Yeah. No, yeah. it's gonna be very interesting as, if, as, as you've enumerated in the past on the goggle here is that uh, uh, any one of these major policy um, issues like immigration, or, um, open borders and things like that, that is playing with fire. And if he does it through executive order, and I, I readily admit the president has a lot of power when it comes to immigration. Uh, they denied Trump that power, but uh, in, in fact, if you read the constitution, it's very clear. But it, that's, a, that's a tripwire issue here. And, it, and, and so many of the other ones, I mean, um, it, of course, if the Republicans maintain control of the Senate, we won't have to worry about packing the court, okay? Or getting rid of the uh, uh, electoral college. Yeah, but there's yeah. a lot of things that can be done. I mean, it's really sad if you step back. It, it, politics now is executive order, okay? That or throw it to the courts, okay? Because the legislature doesn't have the guts to start making real policy and voting on it. So, um, you know, I don't want to get ahead of our skis. Uh, uh, um, at least here at the gaggle, we're going to wait for the certification of the votes. Um, before we say president-elect for anyone, all right? No, right. I mean, exactly. I mean, it's uh, that that term should be uh, absolutely outlawed. The media should just uh, this is absolutely irresponsible. The media continually to refer to him as 
a president. Well, I, you know, I've been it's thrown this thought. You know, he uh, is, he, you know, according, they should say, according to media projections, Joe Biden will be the next president. He's not president elect. I mean, that's just, it's, it's completely. Well, I, uh, on, on Crosstalk, I had a, a guest um, fire back at me that it's a tradition. I mean, yeah, but traditionally the media was a little bit more even handed, okay? <laughs> at least a little bit more. It's always had a liberal tilt to it. But you know, I can remember as a small boy uh, watching the, uh, the primaries in uh, 1976 when Jimmy Carter came out of nowhere. And, um, but you know, the, the, the way he was treated, it was, it was very respectful. I mean, I think it, the, the real change came um, because of uh, Clinton. Clinton was such a divisive figure. And, um, and then we started seeing uh, really, you know, an abyss created. And then it became a template in 2016. So, you know, to anyone watching this, you know, George and I are, are not spring chickens here. Um, we do remember a time when there was a, a little bit more even handedness. In 2020, there was anything but that. Right, that's right. And I think even the, the issue of the tradition is, is not correct because uh, during Bush v. Gore in uh, 2000, uh, no one referred to uh, President Bush as uh, president elect because the Florida vote was contested. Even though um, he had been declared the winner in Florida, it was in, contested in the courts and therefore he wasn't entitled either to be referred to as president elect or uh, to have the, all the transition facilities made available to him, and they weren't made available to him. You know, he he, he kind of pretended that he is the sort of the the, the president, the would-be president, and would meet with people. You know, this is my Secretary of State. This will be my Defense Secretary. But it was pure fiction on his part. He wasn't. You know. He, yeah, but you know who was writing the fiction was Dick Cheney. Dick Cheney. He was he was a master at it. Okay, yeah. remember remember the trick that I don't know if it was I I can attribute it to Dick Cheney, but the trick that the the Bush campaign uh, uh, used was the transition team podium. Remember that yeah. it came out that first, right. and they created a visual impression of um, uh, uh, again you know it's gaslighting. It's already done. So um, we'll see where that goes. But you know the. The, 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 the fundamental thing here is that the, you know, clinging to um, Barack Obama in his uh, worldview, historically speaking, from 2008 to the present, is not a good idea. It's not a winning formula. No, I think that's, it. that's exactly right. Because, um, uh, you know, the Obama years led to uh, the rise of Donald Trump. I mean, you just can't get around that. Um, that yeah, but they want to get around against it. Barack Obama that uh, the people voted for Trump. They, that's the reckoning they do not want to accept. OK, because because we're going to get the same thing again. I mean, you and I have talked separately about this is that you know, the more I think about it, the more I think Trump is going to run in 2024. Oh, no, there's no question. He will, he will do so. Um, and, you know, yes, he'll be quite old by then, 78, but Trump doesn't seem his age. <laughs> you know, he, he looks very youthful and energetic. Uh, well, so un unless he's stricken by some illness between now and then, uh, you know, absolutely, unconditionally, well, he will run. I think the sen the sense of um, um, vindictiveness keeps him young, you know? That may, think... be, that may be, that may be. And it's very also interesting, I mean, when we think back of will the Biden uh, administration, will the Biden Justice Department decide that they're going to go after Trump? Um, because if they do, that's going to be this, a, a wonderful shot in the arm for him, you know, that he becomes a martyr. Uh, but, and that will really rally everybody around him. You know what, that, that, that's such a good point, because you know what that is, is that, again, in their myopic view of their Obama-esque world view, is that they're going to take care of the, the problem, Donald Trump. The problem for them is that he got, what, 8 million, 10 million more votes right. in 2020 than he did in 2016. Yeah. So I, I, I would tell them to do that with great caution, be yeah. wary, because it would become uh, pitchfork politics. Oh yeah, okay. absolutely. I mean, if they if I had any brains, then they would absolutely avoid doing anything like that. Or, you know, trying to make him a martyr and uh, and and a rallying point throughout the country. I'm not sure that these people have uh, those kinds of brains. I mean, they're just driven by kind of ideology, and they're driven by uh, hatred. So I wouldn't be surprised. And even if the DOJ doesn't, I'm sure some of the uh, state uh, uh, justice departments would do it. I'm sure New York State will try to go after him for some reason uh, or other. So, uh, the yeah. interesting thing is, George, is that the um, 
the Trump DOJ, DOJ never went after Hillary, did they? Nope, nope, no, nope. they, they, they didn't. Um, you know, this day, it's, it's really interesting. It's really interesting. You don't see, you know, the, the, you know in our lifetime, the, the Republicans were elitist, they were snobby, um, uh, they were um, uh, um, uh, uh, exclusionary, and, 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 and to see how things have kind of flipped. It's really quite amazing. I, I also the, think, though, that um, the DOJ, much like the um, State Department and much as the Pentagon, um, they've always been controlled by um, the o Obama fans, uh, by Democrats. I'm, I don't think Trump ever got his hands around uh, the DOJ. I don't think Obama right. ever got his hands around the State Department or the Pentagon. So he, is, he has really almost no real control of them. So, uh, you know, Trump may have said, yeah, why don't you go after Hillary Clinton? Well, no one would actually. Uh, well, who, who's, the, who's the character that um, um, tr it was some kind of trade um, um, uh, directive and he, he took it off Trump's desk. Right. I mean, <laughs> I mean the, the interesting thing is here, again, to reiterate, we, we've looked at all of these forces arrayed against Donald Trump, and he still did better in 2020 than he did in 2016. Right. You would think some people on the left would draw conclusions, the right ones for a change. Right. Yep, that's right. Um, but um, I'm quite sure that we will have uh, Barack Obama uh, around for a while because the people that Biden will appoint will all uh, still swear allegiance to Obama. And that's I right. It'll be like that Obama me... will be playing a major, major role in, in this new administration. <laughs> If it if it doesn't indeed, and it'll be like Joe. Uh, in principle, I'll agree with you, but I'll get back to you. Right. Yeah. That. Uh, yeah. E exactly. So um, you know, after all, not these, these people that he's planning to appoint, they don't have any particular allegiance to him. They do have an allegiance to um, Obama, and so I think you know, we will have Obama to kick around for, for a long time. Least, and of course, Hillary somehow, Hillary somehow will inject herself with surveillance or right, right. human assets to keep an eye on what's going on. That's, yeah, that's exactly she, right. she has those skills. So she needs to hone them, OK? Right. No, that, yeah, yeah, exactly right. All right, well, let's uh, uh, Obama uh, taken care of. Uh, <laughs> we will be, of course, uh, maintaining our laser-like focus on what's going on this week. It's going to be quite an eventful week in the courts. And remember, if you like the gaggle, please like, share and subscribe. See you soon.